One of media's greatest unsolved mysteries is the so-called Max Headroom incident. On November 22nd, 1987, WGN-TV's 9 p.m. newscast was interrupted by the gritty, gritty face of recently canceled TV personality Max Headroom. It happened again two hours later on the local PBS affiliate. What the hell is happening? Broadcast signal intrusion is a fancy way of saying TV hijacking. And TV hijacking is exactly what it sounds like. This is the voice of Grimaud. That was the beginning of the first recorded instance of TV hijacking, what's known as the Southern Television Broadcast Interruption. It's a six minute monologue from a representative of Ashtar Galactic Command. All your weapons of evil must be removed. The time for conflict is now past. This happened in 1977, but its roots are in the Second World War and the origin of radio jamming. Radio jamming is relatively simple. If you have a more powerful transmitter broadcasting on the same frequency as an existing channel, you are jamming. The practice began with Nazis attempting to block BBC broadcasts in Europe during the Second World War. It continued with the escalation of the Cold War as the Soviets attempted to jam Western broadcasts, which led to a transmitter power race that has come to be known somewhat awesomely as barrage broadcasting. Which brings us to 1970s England and the introduction of mysterious alien broadcaster dude, Brillon. Yeah, no. The Southern Television Broadcast Interruption of 1977 lasted six crazy minutes, and while the station immediately issued a press release identifying the broadcast as a hoax, there are those that remain convinced that this was a legit alien transmission. And it is in this spirit that the great zombie apocalypse Halloween prank of 2013 was pulled. Civil authorities in your area have reported that the bodies of the dead are rising from their graves and attacking the living. This particular intrusion involved taking over a Montana station's emergency alert system, which is literally in place so that the president can alert the country about a pending nuclear attack or zombies. Do not attempt to approach or apprehend these bodies as they are considered extremely dangerous. But unlike the still unsolved Southern television broadcast intrusion, that person was arrested. Also arrested, Captain Midnight. Captain Midnight was a Floridian satellite dealer who was mad at HBO for scrambling their signal and messing with his business. So he basically just pointed his satellite at their satellite and broadcast this for four and a half minutes. Good evening, HBO, from Captain Midnight. $12.95 a month? No way. Showtime movie channel, beware. Protesting cable fees might seem kind of white, but broadcast intrusion has been used for weightier political means elsewhere in the world. Rakiet nuklearny średniego zasięgu i zawiesił podejmowanie kąt posunięć na instalowanie na naszym kontynencie. In reference to the upcoming 1985 Polish elections in which only Communist Party members were permitted to run, four astronomers took over the state-run broadcaster with messages of support for the labor movement. Israel used similar tactics in Lebanon in 2006. Okay, back to the fun stuff. At just over a minute into the Disney movie, take a look at what happens. This box pops up indicating, quote, part of the recorded event has been lost due to signal loss, end quote. Then seconds later, the picture pixelates, and then a man and a woman having sex pop up on the screen. Disney Channel has a porn problem. In 2012, Lilo and Stitch was interrupted with six minutes of hardcore doing it. Five years earlier, Handy Manny was similarly disrupted. And when I told them that you guys were coming and to fix the TV, then um, they mimicked the action and the sound back to me. <gasps> The same thing happened during the Super Bowl in 2009. 
tight, but you know. If you were lucky enough to be a Comcast subscriber in Tucson, 37 seconds of a very handsy lady were shown. The man responsible for this was arrested and Comcast did offer all of their subscribers $10 for their trouble, which is amazing. There you go. Yeah. You shake a little air into it. Okay, you can. And he went to the perfect guy. Which brings us to that most legendary of TV hijacks, The Godfather Part 1 and 2 of Broadcast Intrusion, The Max Headroom Incident. <laughs> Well, if you're wondering what happened, <laughs> so am I. That was incident one. No sound, just static and weird bobbing in the middle of a primetime newscast. Incident two came later that night and was weirder. I'll get you a hot drink, man. Fake Max Headroom hijacked Doctor Who for about 90 seconds of barely comprehensible madness. Naturally, it ends with him being spanked by a fly swatter. This was national news. And while it may have been a stunt, it is not treated as a joke. Chicago's video pirate could face a jail sentence and fines for his freelance exercise in public access. Despite the incredibly high profile of this daringly strange intrusion, Max Hedrum remains at large, which is so, so rad. What do you think? Is TV hijacking strictly awesome or is it something we should be a bit worried about? I mean, zombies and spankings are one thing, but what about a warning that led to actual panic? Let us know what you think in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of This Exists every week. Be excellent to each other. I am very, very excited that after talking about this a lot, we finally made a This Exists subreddit. It's Whoa This Exists, there is a link in the description, and that's the place where we're gonna do the Shit Heel Book Club, where we'll do movie and music recommendations, where we can talk more about these episodes, and you guys can suggest ideas, and basically we can have a very sweet and cool time. So Reddit, R, Whoa This Exists, and let's party. Last week's episode was all about the mystery of director Alan Smithy, and a lot of you complained that it didn't have comments. It's a busy time of year, and the comments is weirdly one of the most time-consuming parts of this show. And given that only about 14% of the people who watch this show also watch the comments, I'm gonna have to scale it back for the time being, just because I'm only one man and, and this is not my full-time job. So from here on out, we're gonna do comment of the week. My personal favorite comment on last week's video came from Mercs to Profit, who could not believe that somehow their favorite movies growing up were Mighty Ducks, The First Face Off, and Hellraiser 4, and Death of a Gunfighter, and what a bummer it is to not be able to grow up and meet the genius who made all these movies, especially because of the influence they had on young Merc's life, who has now grown up to be both a gunfighter, a hockey player, and a Hellraiser. So quite the resume that you have Thank you for that hilarious and enjoyable comment. Let's talk more on the subreddit. Tweet at me. I'm gonna keep talking uh, to you about the ideas on this show, and I apologize there aren't gonna be as many comments in the video uh, for the time being. So please yell at me on Twitter, yell at me in the comments, yell at me on the subreddit. Let's yell. Ah.